Thank you guys all for coming today. I'm going to bring out Nathan Fielder and Benny Safdie here. I'm going to hug you. I'm going to hug him all day. I'll just keep. I won't take offense to no hug. But <laughs> he said, I'm going to hug you as he came in for a hug. Um, oh, His yes, arms we have, are already like this. We, so, have, yeah. we have others. We have uh, Corbin Burnson. There he is. We have we have Najoni Austin or, and and Barkhad Abdi and Barkhad Abdi. Oh. These are nice chairs. All right. Well, thank you guys all for coming today. You know, I saw this show when it was coming out, and also I, I, I remember I ran into you maybe a year and a half ago, and you were telling me about it, and I couldn't quite imagine what you were doing. I was like, what did I say? Well, you said it was like about, you were doing it with Benny for one. I was like, that's already interesting. And that it was like selling, you know, it was like flipping houses, but uh, you talked about the photography and that the cameras were all going to be really far away and that they were going to be like, like almost like surveillance cameras. I was like, okay. And uh, I, it was all the stuff that I, I yeah, when I how saw. How did we ever sell this show with that <laughs> pitch? That's terrible. <laughs> oh my God. I bought it. Oh, wow, good. Uh, the, uh, one of the things, I was just talking to Najoni, about, Najoni, am I saying your name correctly? Okay. I was talking to Najoni just a second ago. That, like, the thing that is, I watch the show as it came out every week, and uh, the tone of it is so hard to put your finger on, and that everybody is in the same thing, in the same, very, very naturalistic, but also like, very tense and... Um, yeah, and I, I, I guess I'm just curious to talk to all of you about the tone because that's uh, there's many things to talk about. I just thought we'd start there. How do you? Is that something discussed, or is it in the writing, or in the directing, or is it just sort of sort of imbued in in the making of it? Yeah, I mean, it was. It, it, it's not like one. I think Benny and I, when we first met, we felt like we were we thought about tone a lot as like the end to anything we're doing in terms of trying to make something funny or dramatic, it starts with the tone. And I think we were very much on the same page about like that realism stuff. Yeah. Before even the concept of the show, just what excited us. Yeah, because I think what was interesting about our collaboration was Nathan would, was coming at kind of the nonfiction world and trying to make it feel fictional. And I was coming from the fictional world and trying to make it feel non-fictional. So the two things naturally met in the middle. And I think that like we both have a good kind of bullshit meter, just to put it like bluntly, for like what doesn't feel like it should. And it was really nice to have that, you know, and also to have two different sides of that as we went through it. And um, yeah, I guess it was just a matter of also just for with regards to the tone, we really came at it from like, well, how can we do something like Columbo, for example, where he could walk down the aisle and pick up the phone and dial the phone number on a rotary phone and wait for the phone call to ring and then wait for the person to answer. Like those things were very exciting to us to really play with real time, you know, so that it really made you feel like you were there, you know, and it, it kind of, so all of that stuff were, was things that we were, we were talking about and then we would really set it up in a lot of ways to just play with, play with that in, within the acting, so. It, within the acting thing, I have a lot of actor, big actor friends who finally I have some street cred with. Um, thank you guys. <laughs> Taking 40 years, but the curse did it, put me over the top. Um, but they say, what was it like? And I go to that one scene that you'll see later in the, when I'm getting the money for Emma. And we're sitting in that little Mercedes, the car. And I look at him, I'm like, where the fuck's the camera? And you have no idea where the camera is. And you suddenly realize, and that's what you guys did. So here, I'm, perform I'm on theater, I'm performing in front of you. On a stage, the camera's there, there. Maybe there's a long lens, but it's over where you are, Spike. But you're, there's a camera, there's a crew. She and I were sitting in a car, and the camera's like 200 yards away in the back of a van <laughs> through a window. And you're like, OK, we're just talking here. you know. And I think that. For me is, I mean, I don't know if you guys, that's sort well, of did it, did it, world. Was that helpful for you or was it oh, annoying? It was, it was so freeing, man. Oh, good, because good. I'm not playing to any, there's no, what's my good side, bad side, how's the lighting? You, you, don't, have like, time, you don't have time to think about no, that. No, you're just yeah. talking to each other. 
Is that 40,000? Yeah, that's 40,000. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, and so it, I, I, it's pretty hard to go back to now. Directors are like, that's your mark right there, and you're going to be there, and on that line, I want you there and there. I go, fuck that. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going to talk to this person. Yeah. And, and well, Nijoni, you, you, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, that is, that is the most frustrating thing, is that when you finally feel that, you're just like, oh, you can just talk to one another yeah, and, right. and have that? But anyway... And Nijoni, what was in terms of the tone? What, how, what were the conversations like in terms of your character? And yes, in preparation or rehearsal or on set. I mean, we did improv work um, before I got like officially cast. That was part of my audition process. Um, and actually, we were just talking about this in the Q and A before. But I thought it was so interesting with the improv. Um, auditions the way that you did it was because first we started out like being very like script to script and you guys were just like oh let's not do this anymore let's just like let's I'll give you like some prompts and you there's a point where like um, I felt like you gave me like some prompt to talk to Emma Stone and eventually like she I made her cry and I was wondering like was that her acting or did I actually make her cry? <laughs> and uh, because you kept like pushing me towards her and be like, all right, you need to go a little, a little harder, a little more, a little more intensity. And then I was like, whoa, like did I actually make her cry? <laughs> but um, I thought that was a really interesting um, thing that you did. Well, Benny, Benny and I were really like from the start and even in the process where you came in and all that, you know, we're okay writers, but like, you know, the actual phrasing and the specifics of a word, you know, Benny had a really good point early on where he's like, we shouldn't be attached to any specific phrasing or anything because if someone sort of would say it's slightly different or it's unnatural to the person, you know, let's yeah. just tweak it around that. If they're, if they're having a hard time with the section, let's sort of do that. So I think the way scenes were set up, the actors would be a big part of it in terms of like, okay, what's unnatural? Where do you want to be? But then once we would set it up, because we'd have these timed sort of zooms and everything, we'd sort of have to like repeat and it would, I would lock into, and we'd change the script. We tried to do this days before so we have time to yeah. adjust the script stuff, but. And it was like what we, there was in like, um, just with, with regards to the tone, you know, there's specific rules in the edit that like if the zoom was going forward, you couldn't go backwards in the zoom. So the scene had to play out so that it hit at the same place during each part of that zoom. So, so it feels like one take. Yeah, so, that was, so those were things done. that were very important. So you had to really like, because if you went back, then it would be, it would just, it didn't make sense, you know? So there were all these things like that. So you would have to kind of spend the time to get it. But as long as anybody said the idea of what you had put down there, it's fine. You know, I could care less if you said the words that were written, as long as you said the ideas behind it, you know? Because you need a, you need a place to go, but you don't necessarily need the exact um, uh, framework. And so would you guys would rehearse I mean, you I would do the improv in rehearsal and then take the language and the words. That, that was more for the audition where she came in. We okay. were just doing the improv. But, but you would, you would do, we would do scenes and then, oh, that's bad. Let's change that. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Oh, just <laughs> on set. We, yeah, yeah, we'd rewrite on the fly. There was, I think yeah. there was one, it's in episode two, where we did the full scene. And then Nathan and I over lunch were like, that was the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> And we just rewrote it over. Just lunch. our writing was bad. It was so it was bad. Like, like we, everything we, about it was, it was wrong. Conceived. Yeah. It was not tied to the people. It was just horrible. And so we were like, we know that this could be great. Let's rewrite it. We sat down over lunch, rewrote the whole thing, printed out the sides, and then we reshot the scene again. And I think it's a lot better. And also with uh, Barkad, the um, the his character uh, Abshir was completely sort of written around him once he said he would yes. do it because that character was originally someone completely different and then we sort of re-envisioned it. So that's all to just make it feel, I think, um, you know, and then Benny was like, I hadn't met Barkhad before we did it, but Benny's <laughs> like, he's the best actor you've ever seen. <laughs> and it, it's amazing, like when you are acting, 
yeah, everyone's so good, and I found for myself at least when I'm acting with people that are just like so real, your falseness, like if you do a false move, then <laughs> it registers, so you have to really start acting more I, like, I, I told, yeah. I told the story where it's in, I think it's in episode three, um, when Barkhad has to explain, like, oh, where did these boxes come from? And he goes, oh, I work at the grocery store over there. And the entire crew just looked <laughs> like it was there. And it was just, it was, it was a beautiful thing. The, um, the, uh, by the way, how many people have seen the entire series of it? So, Ooh. all right. Okay, good. Nice. How many people have just seen this first episode? Wow, all that's right, better. Great. Uh, and how many of now they're going to watch the how rest many of, of the people who have seen the first episode will, will not be watching anymore? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Two, three, One, five. Two, okay. There's yeah. night vision. Yeah, about There's 50. night vision, so we know. Um, the uh, well, please watch it till the end because we can't talk about things right now, and I'm mad at you, that for anyone that didn't watch them. Um, no, but the, the, it's, the whole series is just incredible. And, uh, and um, I don't want to say anything about where it goes, because I don't want to ruin it for you guys. Um, so, but uh, what are the, you, you were talking about one of the rules was that you can never zoom out. And uh, I feel like on any production, you, 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 the crew, we always have our, our, our rules. What are the other rules that sort of defines this? For you as you're making it, um, that would, that, well, that I guess that, that was the zoom. Yeah, the zooms had to be in place. Another one of the rules was we we would walk into a room, and it was like, okay, well, let's see if we can do this in one take. Let's figure this out. You know, where would we have to be for this to happen? And then you'd find the places. You almost like a like in a bank one robbery. setup. One in setup. one setup, not one take. So in one, but, yeah, yeah, one setup. That's but but the, the idea. Two cameras going. So, yeah. but you'd then be like like a bank robber, being like, oh wait, oh there's a good spot over there, and then you'd be like finding all these little things, and it really kind of opens you up to your surroundings, and you really get attached to it. Um, so that was another another good one, and the thing that was really hard was our was our inserts. That was like because they were kind of against the rules, but. We, yeah, we, we, I don't know. We had this a lot. We wanted to create a sense that the characters are just being watched from like, like old, some old sort canted of... camera was like a really yeah. big inspiration. Like when it was shot on film and they had big cameras that had to be hidden, you know, they would, to get a better shot, they would just drive the van. You know, there was like one, there's one thing where the, the two people walk this way and then they just kind of like, slowly went by a pole and found a better shot, you know? <laughs> I feel like that's in one of the episodes, yeah, yeah right? <laughs> Where the, the camera's just in a car and then the car starts moving? Yes. That's right. The, uh, any other rules that... We didn't... Did we have... We, I Act don't know if well. we have rules. Act rules. well. Do you have rules? What are your rules? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I know like, what you mean. I know what you mean. You have to have... You just have to have a certain kind of... You have you, rules on everything you do, Nathan. Yeah. I have rules? Yes. Yeah. Well, there's certain, yeah, there's certain, like, there's rules. certain things that, like, if... Well, okay, yeah. I, I, maybe, maybe it's like, because if you feel like you have rules, then it's also, if you have a rule that's too clear, then if people start seeing that there's rules, you can't surprise them anymore right. sometimes. So I also think even though we may have rules we're aware of when we might be doing yes, something too yes. much and we try to do the opposite. Right, like right. there is one scene where it's like just completely handheld camera, yes. like in the... In the, with the Sikh tent. Yeah, yeah, when she goes in to see the Sikhs and, you know, we wanted it to feel like a documentary or something. And so, so I, think, I think we're sort of open to... Um, oh, another thing we were doing too, I think we had COVID it was because we were shooting in COVID and we were probably having those conversations about like how do we represent this yes so we had a rule with like yes. we can't do like a mask uh, thing that other shows do or other jokes with masks that people so everything we did with a mask at the time we were shooting we hadn't seen done with a mask and we were very specific. We, yeah. we we were very oh, and another was yeah it was like we were very specific about trying to future proof, you know the show itself. 
So we didn't want to get things to be too topical that they became so ingrained in the present, even though we were shooting it in the present. And so that was something we would always like. And then we wrote the show even like a year and a half earlier. So all this stuff, we had to kind of figure out a way to do it in a way that wasn't, that never felt dated or tried to be. Like, because that's always the worst when something hits and you're just like, oh, great. You know, we were so upset when the gas stove thing came out. But then we realized it's for a different reason. It's not for the environmental reason. It's for a personal belief system with Whitney. So I think that makes it okay. But, um, but there was, there was, yeah, there was, there was that kind of, and I think the other thing was, is we really wanted to kind of be as truthful to what was happening in Española at the time, you know, so we would talk to the people there, ask them when they came on set, like, is this this, or would this happen this way? And if they said no, then we just changed it, you know? And what, in terms of the, the cast, which uh, I, I just saw Jen Venditti, your casting director, who yes, you're here. Jen, Jen Venditti Jen and, and Angelique Midthunder are both here stand right Stand up, now, who stand up. Stand, please. Stand, yes. And cla clap for yourselves Longer. and each other. <laughs> but with tone, too, I mean, that's a huge part that's of it. And they, you know, you know, they have their methods of finding, you know, I think the... The search for the the girls in there too was just like those girls have never acted before, and you you don't see a lot of them in this episode, but they were, they were like amazing, right? And you Barkad was like, sort of worked with them through us, even like he had his own like thing he would. To Habo, you had to scenes. you were with you were, yeah. yes. you or did you find out you were related? Was that a yeah. real? Th I am kind of related, yeah. Dahabo. To Dahabo. Yeah, Dahabo. So that was like an amazing thing. They figured it out after. But yeah. we were we were able to rely because it was certain th there were certain things that we realized that the 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 two the two girls could get from us. But when he, when Barkad told it to them, it was totally different, you know, because he was able to talk to them in a, in a, in in a very different way. And you had a very good good uh, relationship with them. Yeah. Dahaba was more combative with you, yeah. but that was helpful, and we incorporate that in the scenes, you know. So I think that that was always um, you just kind of have to learn from what's happening in front of you, really. But but just with regards to Jen and Angelique, to do this kind of casting on a television show was very very hard, and we had to convince a lot of people that it was not a, a crazy idea because there's reoccurring characters and it's not just people coming back, coming in one time. You know, people who, who are having their first time acting are coming back for multiple episodes in a season over a 70-day shoot. And that's, that's hard to convince people that that's okay. So thank you. Yeah, well and uh, yeah, also Jen's worked with you guys on all your movies. Yeah, yeah. The, the casting is so good in your movies. Yeah. And Jen's the, one of the best. The, or the best. <laughs> the, uh, yes. Can, but in terms of uh, uh, you know the three of the, the, you know, the, the these three roles, what drew you to them, and what uh, how did they shape the character once they joined? Um, well, with with Nijoni, it was really just like we had we were looking for a very specific kind of person, and it was very hard to find that person. And then when Nijoni came in, it wasn't the person we had written, you know, but it was. That's when we realized, okay, now we can take, take the amazing person that she is and make that the part of the character and really work it in. And yeah, or just make sure it made sense to yeah. her in terms of, I, we were trying to do something sort of, you know, you know, in terms of like what contemporary artists have to deal with. Like we were trying to do something, the art world has been done so much in TV and movies, so we were trying to do something a little different with that. So, you know, I think we wanted a specific tone that isn't what you expect necessarily when you read, oh, this is an artist, yeah. you know, like that you might think of a certain personality type. And I think you brought something to the role when you first came in that was like not what we were initially expecting, but it was like so authentic. It was, it was cool. So then we tried to sort of really work around that. And, but, uh, and then there's, there's, a, there's a speech in episode eight that literally... Najoni essentially wrote in her improv, you know, in one of our early sessions, we asked her the meaning of the artwork that we had kind of created for the show, and she attached the most beautiful, insane description of it 
that we're just like, well, that has to be what it is, you know? And yeah, the phrasing yeah, was, was perfect. Amazing. So hopefully you felt like that, because that's, I think, very important, because then it just hope, hopefully makes you more invested in it, you know? And what was your, what, what, when you read? <laughs> She's just nodding. <laughs> when, you, when you read This it, was sort of it, too. She had, she did have this essence, like, when she came in, where <laughs> she was sort felt- of unreadable in a way where <laughs> you're like, is she furious right now, or <laughs> is she happy? But we, we felt like for Whitney and what that would do to her, oh it was God, incredible. Yes. And so we, we really wanted to lean into that. And that's what sort of like excited and us in a way is like, <laughs> this is incredible because Whitney needs to be able to understand what people feel about her. And so someone who she can't tell that with would drive yes. her crazy. And, and, and then there's two moments in the show where you, where you see past it. You know, one's with Dougie and the other's with Brett. You know, where you where like, and Whitney sees both of those moments where she's like, oh, wait, that's, that's who she is. But is she that way with me? Like all this kind of, because that's on everybody's mind when you have a person who you want to be friends with is, is, it's just kind of a normal thing of like, well, is this how they are all the time? Or are they pretending or this? Or so playing with all those kind of insecurities is, is, is interesting. And then just to talk about Corbin, that scene with the, that was, that, like, when we wrote it, we're like, if this makes it into the show, that's going to be a miracle. And when Corbin read the lines, it became, I, I was like, oh, my God, it's going to work. You know, because he was so confident, so confident in it. It was just like, it was one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen. It was like, I was like, oh, wow, this is, uh, yeah, it was amazing. As an audition scene, you rarely get something that you can bite into. (laughs) Like that. The only problem for me was I was doing it with my wife, which was... (laughs) She was reading, you know, these self-tapes are ridiculous. And she's sitting there, I'm having to do this cherry tomato scene with her. And it was, you know, it was, uh, it was, it, and on top of everything, she's just, get the fucking lines down, get the fucking lines down. <laughs> you know, she's just, she has no tolerance for me at all if I do not have lines down for these self-tapes. And, and uh, yeah, no, it, it, but it was, as an actor, send me that scene over and over and over and you can, it's better than like, you know, which where are the directions to the aquarium? I don't know, that way. I mean, you know, it, it's just, there was so much to it that was, it was just right up my alley, too. I just dig that stuff, there's, man. There was one, there's one take in the thing where you just threw it in there. I guess we talked about, like, how you had a bad relationship with your father. Oh. And then at, he went into the scene, and he's like, yeah, my dad, fuck him. And then fuck just, him. And just like... <laughs> That alone told you everything. Yeah, he hasn't come to me in my dreams since. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, uh, yeah, fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true, Dad. I'm sorry, man. I, I do, I do want to say, too, I, I, I know I mentioned uh, Whitney, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Emma couldn't be here today, but uh, and she apologizes, but... Um, She's shooting a movie right now, but she said uh, she she just texted that she uh, is able to. Uh, we have her live uh, on over Zoom or whatever to to. So if you want to ask a question to her or anything, uh, we can kind of load her up and. Uh... Oh, hey everyone. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, Emma, we were just talking about the tone and how the three of you sort of discovered the tone together. And I, I was curious about your character. Um, and tonally, you are, I mean, there's this tension and this awkwardness, and, but very naturalistic. And I was wondering how you discovered that. Yes. How you co- oh, OK. Good, good. Um, meaning, uh, meaning, uh, yes, me. OK, mean- bye, you guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That was great. That okay. was great, yeah. Yeah. No, it was insight- insightful, for sure. Yeah, I think that it's that good to great. hear from her about the process, because, exactly. yeah, we can't really speak to her experience, so. Um, I just, I have to call attention to Spike's ability to read her facial, because that was, like, facial expression, because you were, like, 
moving along. It was that was unbelievable. Uh, thank you. I'll take it. Um, the uh, what? Um, you kept the you kept the question going when you got some approbation. It was great. Well, I mean, she didn't answer it. Yeah, though, I know, but, but it was still. I, <laughs> and I'm not going to take it personal. <laughs> well, she's weird. She's a weirdo like right. that. So, you know. So wait, wait, well, it's her, right? I'm Very, pa yeah. Okay, cool. But that's how she normally <laughs> acts, like one-word answers. <laughs> the, uh, Should we bring her back? Should we bring her <laughs> back? I have another question. Yeah, let's for ask her. her another question. She's back in live, so let's bring her back. She'll put it on Zoom again. Is she still there? I yeah. don't know. Let's go. I don't know. Can we bring her back there. one more? Because she said she was available. So let's bring her back one more time. I don't people. know if she's still. She said she was busy. No, text so. her right now. I don't know if she can. <laughs> she's shooting a movie. So. Can we can we get her Zoom back on one more time? She's really busy now. I think she's. I think. I think it's. Uh, it's. Uh, it's good. We don't want to oh, bug here, her. Back, she is. Back. Great. But, uh, Emma Stone, oh, ladies no, and I gentlemen. Guess she's not. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, oh. here she is. Emma, here she is. Here on. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us again, Emma. Um, I'll ask. I, I, that was a great. Thank you for answering that question. I just wanted to ask a question. Sorry, they pulled you on. This will be the last one. This is it. Okay. I swear. Okay? Because I, I, they, they, they I, I didn't know. I know you said you only had time for one. <laughs> so did you? Did have you a like great time on the shoot? What? Sorry. Did you? Oh, there's a connection yes. issue. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Great. Thank you. See ya. Thanks, Emma. Thanks for doing this. Talk to you later. Okay, bye, you guys. <laughs> She's shooting in like Budapest, wow, it worked right? twice. So generous with her time. Yeah, Very generous. Know, really. She answers Zoom all the time. Um, the, uh, Ask her again. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask her about the last episode. The, uh, wait, we can't talk about the last episode, can we? You know, I feel like the people... <laughs> my thinking is, oh, if you leaving. haven't started until now, maybe you deserve a little punishment of a spoiler, <laughs> right? Because it's yes. been... I agree. It's been over six months, eight months. I also, I also think that it's okay to talk about it because you're going to want to know how we get there. It's okay, yeah. yeah. You'll get a different experience. Too. Um, one of the things I loved about the show was the, t the tension. There's so much tension, and you don't know why. And you don't know like where it's going. You, you, and, and there's also there's so many things that are in there for no reason. So you, like you're you're watching them, and like, is this important? And then no. And that, that, so, <laughs> but like in the best way, because that you really don't know which what is where it's going. But uh, it, and th so the the end. Well, the, for one, I just loved it because it, it, obviously I didn't guess that's where it was going, but um, <laughs> but it felt very true to the characters, like and the relationship and uh, and of, of, of your character and Emma's character. But wh at what point did you arrive on this? Or where is this? Was this at the beginning or is this? How did you find this? The ending. Yeah. That it was it was one of the f <laughs> like maybe within like 10, ten minutes. minutes of coming yeah. up with the concept <laughs> of the show and then you we had it we actually mapped it out pretty quickly like the general trajectory and like the ending and then we had to fill in a lot of the details and at first i think we made sort of bigger moves in terms of like yes. more overt dramatic things happening and then we sort of realized as we were writing it it's like the real tension is like in the if it's if it feels really real and you think anything could happen at any moment, that's actually scarier than like seeing someone fall and die. Yeah. Which we had like that happen. We had characters dying and all this like early on, and then we we're we were like, oh no, this is like when you always feel something's gonna happen, and your relationship with the show changes, and your the audience is having like you're having a viewing experience where you're following two people can watch the episode and sort of think it's gonna go in different ways or be following different stories. And for us, like, the stuff, we, we, we like that when we watch things because it, it makes us, like, lean in and yeah. it feels like a mystery. And the, and, and, and the pace was something that we were also, like, to talk, like, that's something that we knew we could play with with regards, like, if you're in a scene for a much longer time than you should be, oh, well, I have to be here. They're telling me something, you know? And also, the name of the show. You know, we realized that that is, a big help, you know, for in a lot of ways, you know. So like, you know, something is there 
So there was like, and, and like, there were times where we went really too far, but then you kind of had to pace it out to know that when to give something and when to not, and really kind of we, we, we had fun with that aspect of it, not to have fun with the audience, but to have fun with the storytelling, because we were very, very respectful and adamant about certain things that we wanted you to feel, you know, and if anything threw that, th took that away, or got, we would, we would change it, you know, we were very conscious of the watching experience. And what it's about, since the characters are like, they're all about looking at people and like projecting their own things onto it that don't necessarily exist. We sort of wanted the character's experience to tie into like the audience's experience. Like, well, you're looking at people, you're looking at a situation and you have to decide in the moment what matters and what's important. And that sort of puts you in that sort of crazy headspace that maybe like Whitney is in and, a lot of the time. And just to talk about the ending, it's the first time where you're now put in a position very similar to what Asher was put in in the first episode, where you're seeing something that's totally unbelievable, and yet you think it's real. You know, you think you're seeing it as real. Or in the third episode. It, or, or uh, no, the first episode, when you get, like, what you think is going wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. you think that this curse is, but it's not, it's so impossible. Yeah. It just doesn't work that way. But then you're getting all this stuff that's trying to push you and make you believe it, and you have to ask yourself the same question. Like, is this actually real? Is this supernatural? Is it not? And you are now wrestling with the same questions that the characters wrestle with. And that, I think, it was what was so important for us about the final episode was it puts the characters under the ultimate microscope of it, do they hold up, you know, under the most insane, insane possibilities. So that's up you, to you guys. You know, I wasn't given a... 10th episode script to read, so it was all a surprise to me. I think one thing that really has to be noted, and I'm going to say this and be a bit more serious, none of that would have worked, Nathan. You were awesome in that. Yeah. You were, you were, yeah. you grounded yeah, that thing. You were very good. You oh, did. Thank you. Yes. If we didn't feel for what you were feeling, it might have just been a bunch of trickery, you know, and like, oh, strange, cursed stuff. But you were so grounded in in that character, ground, that's, yeah, grounded, that's not quite right. You're, but um, as an actor to an actor, I just want you to know that oh, that was man, really appreciated. Oh man, that means so much to hear from you. That, that's really nice of you to say. Well, there was true, there was true fear. There was true fear, true yeah, fear. I mean, that's not Does easy. Did that sound sarcastic? It wasn't. Yeah, no, I, oh, okay, okay. Why, why did you, they laughed, I don't know what that. What? I was being sincere. But it is, I, there's, there's the specifically the moment when, you, when yeah, you're yelling at Dougie to not let them cut the branch. Yeah. I couldn't, like, I was looking up at you as you were screaming this, and I was like, oh, my God, he really believes he's going to die. Yeah. You know, like, that's what it felt like. Well, Benny would keep telling me to, like, go bigger all the time, <laughs> and uh, it felt and, unnatural at times, but it, I did it, it in some of these things. Like, all the Asher, like, snapping stuff <laughs> and, like, getting mad was sort of... I love we it. had a little bit of it, yes. but then we added a couple more things because it was just an interesting character trait, someone who like snaps and then regrets it. Yeah, immediately. Immediately, <laughs> it, like calms himself. It was, that was really fun to do. Yeah, we're getting this, the signal that we're getting kicked out of here. Oh, okay. Yeah, but thank you all for coming and thanks for having me. Thank oh, you. thanks everyone. Thank and you. thanks everybody. <laughs> and Jen and Angelique. And thank you Spike, this is great. <laughs>